Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Utah Story Show. My name is Rich Marcosian. Today on the program, we talk about the failure of the Paycheck Protection Program, why millions and millions of dollars were funneled to publicly traded corporations rather than small businesses. We'll get into that. We'll also talk about getting off of the bullet train of life. Um, some of the interesting um, things that I've gotten out of this time off from my life and some of the things that I think are happening to communities as a result of what's going on with COVID. So that's going to be on the program. But first, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors. I want to tell you about Canyon Meadows Grass-Fed Beef. I have become a complete convert of the benefits of grass-fed beef, both in terms of what it does for the environment and the good it does for your body. So most beef in this country is produced um, on ranches, on uh, in, in pastures, but then they spend about a third of their life in what's called a feedlot. And if you haven't seen a feedlot, go check them out. I'm not going to say they're good or bad, but they are what they are, and most cows spend their lives on a feedlot, as opposed to grass-finished, grass-fed beef that where cows spend their entire lives in pastures, eating rich, nutritious grass as cows are supposed to eat. In feedlots, they eat corn it produces a different product in a feedlot than it does in a pasture. So go check out CMR Beef, read about the benefits of grass-fed beef, and just try out their beef. It is seriously amazing. I absolutely love their product. It is way better than factory farm beef. It's better for you. It's better for the environment. Go check them out at cmrbeef.com today. Okay. Um... A lot of news coming out now about where, how that $350 billion was allocated that Congress approved about a month ago and how they need more money because so many small businesses were not able to get any of it, including us. Um, so I was natu naturally skeptical of the money. I, I really uh, don't trust the federal government, and I'll give you a bunch of reasons for that later on. Um, but mainly, the federal government is financed and, and controlled and supported by giant corporations. I mean, those are the people who get congressional members elected. Those are the people who make the laws. Those are the people who support the types of laws that are created. So when the uh, even when if, if Donald Trump and Steve Mnuchin had the very best of intentions in deciding they're going to give $350 billion to small businesses, um, you know, it, I just knew it wasn't going to go into the right place. And so I'm going to give you a few um, numbers here of what actually happened. Um, 100 publicly traded corporations received $500 million of this money. Um, why would we allow giant publicly corporate publicly traded corporations to get this kind of money when they have a, many of them have well over 500 employees it's because marco rubio of all people inserted into the bill that the money could be allocated per location it was you you weren't going to be discriminated against if you happen to have 300 locations so every single lo location of a restaurant was looked at as a separate entity um, really unfortunate that Mr. Rubio had to put that provision in, it's, but it just makes it clear that who he works for, who most of our senators work for, who most of our congressional members work for. They work for the corporations who got them elected. And so now they're going back to the drawing board. They're looking at ways they could um, hopefully get more small businesses, little ma and pa shops involved in the program. The problem with little tiny shops is, and most of the restaurant owners who are in Utah Stories is they don't have a legal experts. They don't have um, CPA experts. And before you get a loan, you want to know what the what the provisions of the loan are, like what what sort of mandates are or strings are attached to this loan. That's why I wasn't uh, ready to go jump on the bandwagon of getting it. Um, whether it's a grant or whether it's a forgivable loan or whether it's a 
uh, a loan you got to pay back with minimal amount of interest. It wasn't ever clear. And my bankers and none of the people I talked to, I would get advice from experts and all three experts would give me three different bits of advice. So I was about ready to apply for it on KeyBank's website and it had a small business portal on there and I clicked on that. I was able to get in. I had to come back to get all my financials together and the, the button at the top had disappeared. There's no mechanism for applying anymore. So now Congress has allocated another uh, $400 billion, th no, $340 billion to um, a new program that's supposed to extend the payroll protection program. And um, supposedly that's going to start up. KeyBank still does not have the buttons. So if you're with KeyBank, um, maybe you can let me know what I'm doing wrong, but it's not there anymore. And I, and I know, so I, I, I'm in contact with a lot of small business owners. I haven't talked to many of them in a few weeks, but I do not know one who has yet received their PPP money. Um, I did receive $2,000 of EIDL money. Um, it was just inserted right into our account. I don't know why it was 2000 not 10000 or what it was actually... Uh, what it's actually intended to be used for, or if it's a loan. I, I kind of think it's just disaster relief money like the $1,200 we're supposed to get. I don't know anybody who's gotten the $1,200 check yet. We didn't get ours yet. Um, I, I don't know what you need exactly to qualify. I think, she, I think it has to do with your tax returns from last year. Um, but it's just like, this is why we cannot rely on the government to solve problems for us. We need to be proactive. We need to take control, control of our own source of income and not think that the government's gonna give us a handout that's basically gonna rescue us. It just doesn't work that way. What we need is the economy back open. What we need is to understand all the laws associated with social distancing. Every time I've gone to Costco, I'm blown away by how well everybody is obeying and abiding by the laws in place and i'm just an advocate why don't we take the costco model or the state liquor store model and apply that to restaurants and small businesses why don't we do that today if we have the testing capacity which we have in utah we're like uh we were i believe second behind montana in in text uh, in testing capacity per capita we should be opening up today. Um, the state of Georgia is opening up today. Um, other states near Georgia are following suit. And the reason why I'm such a strong advocate of opening today is because I said this on the last program, for every one percentage increase of unemployment, there is a 3% increase in drug overdoses and suicide. When you start laying people off, and they can't support their families, when they can't support and pay their rent, their bills, they just start doing stupid things. Um, a lot of people in this country live paycheck to paycheck. Those people, a lot of those people work at restaurants. We need to get our economy back open and get money flowing again. Um, we, don't need, we don't need to be looking forward to the next provision of the government. And... Um, I, I can tell you what I found interesting about this whole, uh, the, the last six weeks is I go on a run every morning through Sugar House. There are just no cars. It's just crazy to be running along what used to be such a busy street, crossing Highland Drive, and I don't see any cars. And then I go up by Westminster campus, and the whole campus is closed. I go past like Allen Park and into Sugar House Park. Sugar House Park is just off the hook busy. Everybody wants to be in the park. Everybody wants to be enjoying this beautiful weather. So you don't see any cars, but you see everybody now flocking to the parks. And yesterday was the very first day. It started to feel like a semblance of normalcy. I, I didn't see so many people wearing their masks on the trails. We went to City Creek Canyon. I'll show you some pictures of, of what we did up there. But people started relaxing, enjoying it more. I think that we can all breathe a huge sigh of relief at this point because we have incredibly innovative, smart people living here in Utah. We all are extremely hard workers. 
Um, we all want to work. We, ha- we cannot stand the idea of staying home and doing nothing or Netflix and chill. That's just not in my repertoire of ideas. Um, but one thing it has given me perspective on is when you stop having an agenda for the day and really all you have to do for the day is watch your kids or be home you really start to learn a lot more about yourself and you really start to see your own failings and you start to understand like um where where you break down as a person when times get tough because i noticed that i just would have days where i'm so quick to get so pissed off and i just need to step out because i would get so angry and then i get in a bad mood and then i just want to have a margarita or have a cocktail and then i'd wake up the next morning and have a little bit of a hangover and then you kind of get in this doldrums idea like this all just sucks but then we had something like a shift where we were like we don't have to go to work right now there's no we don't we don't know enough about what's going on to even try to pretend to be busy so why not just try to enjoy every day like it's a it's one thing to say enjoy the moment live in the now but it's a totally different thing to to do it and i think what this has given us an opportunity to do is just get off this like bullet train which is our schedule our lives our ambitions our goals our Everything is, you know, directed toward going from here to get there. Now that train is gone. Like the train is stopped. Nobody's going anywhere. Why not spend time just looking around your yard? What could you do to plant a garden to make your yard look a little nicer? Um, What can you do to make your kid's day a little bit more fun? What can you do to like contribute more around the house maybe i don't know it's it's one of those things where i you can e- so easily be in the wrong frame of mind but if you can just shift your thinking a little bit i think you can actually get a lot out of this and you can um make your life and the and the lives of those who are around you quite a bit better it's just it's just all a matter of perspective and so um and also i have to recommend with these three small kids we're we're at home with every day get them get them outside get them in front of a game get them away from screens seriously we in our inundate ourselves with screens i love the podcasting format because you can listen to it i think that just deciding you're going to have your kids watch watch tv all day or play video games all day you're doing them a disservice Get them in front of a piece of paper with some pencil, with a pencil. Tell them to draw a dinosaur, and then you're going to work on that dinosaur together. Get them outside working in your garden. I've been amazed by how much these kids, they love working in the garden. They love planting seeds with me. I'm going to show you my garden in, in a video that I hope I can make pretty soon. But we're planting all sorts of seeds of all sorts of different vegetables we're going to be growing in the garden, and they are so excited about it. It's really cool to see that. Getting them in touch with nature through your backyard garden. I think that's a that's an incredibly great way to get kids engaged with where their food comes from, how plants grow, the biology of plants, the botany, um, just understanding how different vegetables are planted. And it's it's been really cool to be able to have the time to do that. And I'm really, really glad that, you know, our kids love it. So um All right, so with that, I will keep you updated in future episodes about how PPP is going. We're going to talk to more small business owners in coming days, and uh, we're I'm still working. I know I promised another episode where I'm going to be talking about how what the repercussions are of the Fed basically um, printing six trillion dollars of money so far for the economic disaster relief of COVID-19 and what the repercussions are of that. I I tend to think in economic terms, there's always going to be an effect to a cause. There's always going to be cause and effect. What is the effect of what's going on with the Fed 
and the way they're entangling themselves with so many corporations, just giving straight out loans to giant corporations like the airline industry and, and Boeing, they're, they're going to be on the hook to pay back the Fed for what they're lending them. So there's going to be an entanglement between the Federal Reserve, the bank of the United States and much of the world, and these giant corporations. What are the ramifications of that? I thought it had to be inflation. I've been learning about inflation. I've been studying it. And it's an extremely difficult uh, topic to cover. So I'm going to be offering a deep dive into inflation and monetary and fiscal policy, the difference between the Treasury and the Fed and their relationship. That's going to be my next Rich's Rabbit Hole episode that we'll, I think we'll be recording it in the next few days. Look for it next week. And uh, that's going to be up and coming. And I said um, in the last episode, we don't know yet when our Made in Utah Brewers Fest is going to happen now. It was originally scheduled for May 19th. We decided we just don't know enough about what the laws are going to consist of for mass gatherings. Chances are you still will not be able to have mass gatherings in the middle of May. So we're looking at July, but we're going to let you all know it's really our most successful event of the year. All these craft breweries come out from all over the state of Utah. They set up tents. You get a sample of their beer. We'll have a big German-style party with bands, and it's you know it's it was one of the funnest things we did all of last year. We we it was our first annual event of the Made in Utah Brewers Fest, and the Made in Utah festivals are our celebration of all things local, and so. We're going to be talking um, about when we're going to be having that, how mass gatherings are going to be panning out in the coming weeks and months. And Utah Stories, we're all about supporting the voice of local Utah. So if you if you have some disposable income, be supportive of your local restaurants. They are not the ones getting the PPP money. As we, as we pointed out, it's the giant corporations. It's the Ruth's Chris. Um, all these big names are getting the money right now. They're getting their favors from their political, uh, get, getting their campaign, campaign contribution, contributions given back to them. And the small business mom and pa shops, they're the ones who need our support. So let's, let's do the curbside delivery and call on them. Let's order from them. And with that, I'll read a message from two more of our sponsors. The Utah Story Show is brought to you by The Carpet Barn. So I have a basement where I bought big box store carpet 10 years ago. I bought the Carpet Barn carpet um, after they had been advertising with me. I didn't even know about it until they started advertising with us. I just bought a bunch of their carpet for my basement and it is amazing carpet. It's high thread count, it's beautiful, it's plush. I highly suggest you go check them out at, in South Salt Lake at The Carpet Barn. Go Google them and they'll hook you up with an installer and they have a huge selection of awesome carpet that you can go check out with them. And um, as I mentioned before, Canyon Meadows Grass-Fed Beef, go visit them at cmrbeef.com. Go visit them today and taste the grass-fed difference. And with that, I will see you next time. Go visit us on our Instagram page and see what we're doing there. We recommend trails and adventures and things you can do with your kids. Um, you will keep you completely posted on what's, what's going to happen with our April issue of our magazine. If you go and visit utahstories.com and subscribe to our newsletter there and subscribe to our iTunes or our YouTube channel. That's where we're releasing these episodes every single week. And this is all a part of our digital pivot. We have taken a lot of our content and put it online and we've seen a huge increase in digital traffic and it's all thanks to you. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing this program with your friends. If you will go take the five episode challenge and listen to the last five episodes of this program, you'll really get a sense of what we're all about and what the voice of local Utah and Utah Stories is providing. And if you'll do that, you'll learn a lot about Utah. You'll learn about the economy of Utah and who to support. And you'll learn about how to support local journalism. And with that, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.